Howdy folks, it's Todd Trill here and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. We are in the middle of our Nevada bush trip. We're going to start Lake 3 today, so if you have no idea what's going on, watch the previous video and you will be caught up. So here we go, let's get going right away here. Um, next thing to do, let's see, looks like there's just two little things here. Lone Pine, taking off from Olancha, Olancha. Make your way north using the road as a guide, and you'll quickly discover the dried-out bed of Owens Lake, now a massive salt flat dotted with sporadic seasonal brine ponds. Beyond the basin, a bit farther north, lies the small frontier town of Lone Pine. So we head north 338 for about 14 minutes, give or take. We're going really fast, though, so it should be less than that. 20-minute um, leg, by the way, 30 miles. To the west of Lone Pine, set against the jagged peaks of the Sierra Nevada, find the rounded contours of the Alabama Hills and the LA Aqueduct running along its base. Follow the waterway north until the cross is passed with the highway. A short distance from there between the road and the water awaits an airstrip where you can find land. Manzanar Airport. 067. Okay, so we're going to head north, 338 and then 320. So basically north, northwest or so the whole time so we're following the road as a guide then you'll see little brine ponds and then you'll see lone pine a town the west of the town um, and you'll see the alley aqueduct that's this thing and then there's a runway airport between the aqueduct and the highway all right so let's hide that let's pull up the map and as long as we don't hit back on track we should still be getting this achievement now during this flight oh my gosh we're going right there oh Oh, that's easy. We can actually see that from here. When we were looking for the runway landing area, we could see that next airport. 067, right? That's where we're going. Oh, well, bleh, let's just get out of here. Okay, so there is the um, first set of flaps. And everything's running in this. You don't even need to start your airplane. You just hop in and go for this very simple, um, very simple VFR stuff. I was under the impression this was like challenging stuff, but it's actually not. It's pretty straightforward. If you go through the tutorials on how to fly a plane, you can do this, no problem. Alright, flap shooting already. And, um, let's follow this highway. So what does it say? 338 or something. There's 330, 360, 333. So yeah, we're just going to follow this highway. That is it. Holy cow, this is fast. Now, what I was trying to say before I interrupted myself before was, um, there will be moments when I need to pause this bush trip stuff. So I'm hoping pausing doesn't affect the achievements. I don't think so. I think the only thing that will get in the way of the achievement is hitting that back on track thing. Co-pilot. Um, yeah, I don't, no, 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 go away. Go away. Go away. Why does this stupid thing keep popping up? I have all my sis turned off, so that's coming from the pre-programmed um, activity. That's not part of my sim settings or anything, but it's really annoying. Um, we're totally on track, which is why it's really annoying, because we're exactly where we're supposed to be. <laughs> See? This follows the highway. See the highway under there? There's this thing right there. There's this thing right here. So we're exactly where we need to be. It's just being annoying. So we're just going to go like this until we see this airport. Um, do we stop there, too, like a mile away? Okay, most of these are like 27 really short legs. There's one that's an hour or something. But other than that, it's just a bunch of little short legs. So anyway, we're just going to follow this highway and um, to the airport, which is going to be like right here, somewhere. Maybe a little further down, but somewhere up there. We will um, land, so see you in a little bit. Again, hopefully we don't get interrupted by that co-pilot. That was annoying.
right, so we should see an airport that isn't ours, because if we look on the log, it says 2067. So you see the airport just off the nose. We're going to 067, but if we pull this up, we have a pond, which is right there, with the highway, which is right there, and then 026, which is right there. We are, we are going to 067. So once we go past that, we have this town here, which must be where the airport is. So it's going to be right up there. So um, don't want to accidentally land there, because a lot of things I'm reading online who have people complaining about the achievement not working or the trip isn't working is actually because they're landing at the wrong airport. They'll see one and assume that's it. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to read a VFR map. It's similar to a regular map, but not as similar to a regular map. So it takes a little bit of practice, so you gotta be careful with that. But otherwise, we'll look at Snow Cat Mountain. And back to sightseeing, just wanted to point that out that we are gonna fly over an airport. It is not our airport. We want that one, which I think I can see right about there. I think. We'll find out together in a moment. Alright, I'm pretty sure airport has been spotted right here. We almost missed it because I was so busy sightseeing with y'all. Um, now, at first I thought maybe it was a trick because it has red X's, which means do not use, or not red, has X's, which means do not use. But then it says, a short distance from there, between the road and the water, waits an airstrip where you can land. Um, when I read that wrong, no. Yeah wait an air step where you can land and then our airport so um there you go so we'll land there anyway so that's what it should be there are no other airports in between so let's come down now we are really really high but that's okay and wind actually this runway would probably be better for the wind but we're gonna use that one anyway <laughs> all right tail dragger method here we're gonna come down steep level off at the last minute to bleed off our speed and just float, float down the runway we're in no hurry um, I assume it'll be a landing credit as soon as we stop I don't think it matters where you taxi to there's the viaduct to our right if you don't know what a viaduct is um, I recommend you look it up it's interesting technology um, if you've seen the movie Gone with 60 Seconds You'll see that viaducts are often dry. But um, again, I'm assuming most of my target audience knows what a viaduct is. But if not, perhaps you're a younger person or just don't know. Look it up. It's kind of cool. I'm not going to say what it is. But um, it's kind of neat. But I first learned about viaducts because I've gone in 60 seconds. I wanted to see what they were racing down. All right, here we go. Coming down for a set of flaps. We're going to float a little bit. And you're going to aim for that X, which you normally would not do in real life. You would get in so much trouble if you did that. All right, let's not lose too much speed quite yet. Feet on the rudder pedals here. Look at all that busy traffic. That is so cool. I love it. They're probably wondering, why is there a cub landing at an airport that's been deserted? 
But of course, I'm joking because I guarantee you 101 out of 100 people down there don't even know there's an airport here, let alone that it doesn't exist. That's not in use. <laughs> Alright, let's not stall quite yet. We do want to tease that stall horn, even though we're not in a hurry to stop. But we do want to tease the stall horn, but not quite yet. So let's get some juices going here. Alright, we're about over the threshold, but we're coming down at a pretty high descent rate. So let's level off with this throttle here. Now we'll attitude, level attitude because it's a tail dragger and we're going to hit pretty hard. But we'd only bounce the left main. That's weird. We've been landing these pretty hard. Oh, oh, hey, I thought we landed on all three wheels, but we didn't. We landed just on the, um, just on the mains. Good. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's stop and see if it gives us our landing credit. Or do we have to go? What if I said parking brake? There we go. Good. Parking brake it is. That's the magic button. Alrighty, that's short video edited down, so let's do another leg together. Alright, every time I load a leg, everything gets in your face, so let's um read about this. Ooh, here's the long one. This is the long one. So I'm going to edit this down so it fits in this video, but I might have to pause it because I have other real life stuff to do. As you take flight from the Manzanar, pick back up with Route 395. Heading north, the highway will lead you towards another small town independence all right so we're gonna go in the air now at 313 which is about right here or about three minutes and then we'll see independence and then we'll read about the next thing we'll do a little by little this time because there's a lot here to absorb and don't click back on track so where are we headed to though we're headed to 056 so we're gonna skip that one that's probably independence because it's so close and we're gonna skip that one apparently and skip that one. There's your 056. So it looks like we're just following the highway still. But um, we have a few airports we can reference along the way. All right, so we're at 067 right now. Right? Yeah. And then there's another one really close by. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna head north for a couple minutes. And then when we pass that other airport, that'll be Independence, and then we'll keep keep heading here. I'm trying to look for water features in sight. There we go. Can we go like this actually? There we go. Good. Alrighty. We're going to look for this town and then look for that water. That's how we're going to do this. Let's just take off where we are. Flaps down. Parking brake off. Goose the juices. Goose the juices. I don't know where that came from. Maybe I made up something cool. Don't tell my kid that I embarrassed them already. Alrighty. And we're off. Step on the brakes to stop those wheels and flaps up. Here we go. Um, let's get to what was it, 313? 313 it is. So we're going to head this way. There's 330, 320, 310, just to get back with the viaduct, then we'll do 313. And we're going to look for that town of Independence, which I can already see. And we're going to fly over that airport, and then look for that water feature to stay on track. Okay, see you in a moment, simple as that. And just like that, we're already at the town of Independence. Very tiny town. Only took a minute or two to get there. We're just about to cross over that other airport I mentioned. Okay, let's have a good look at that town though. Satellite imagery filling in. And there we go, there's the airport. So now what are we doing? We're keeping track of our speed. Trimming to keep around five or six grand or so. All right, next order here. Tain Maha. Tinamaha, Tainmaha Reservoir. Use the road as your guide and continue north at 342 degrees. Find telltale lava flows and cinder cones of the big pine volcanic field to the west, and then a bit further on, situated east of the highway, the Tinamaha Reservoir. That must be that um, water thing, and that's 15 nautical miles, so we'll end there with our um, end there with our narration. 
get to the next spot. 342 on the little compass thing, which we'll get there in a second. Once you follow the road, the road is right below us. But the reservoir they're talking about, obviously, is this right here, which you can see right there. So let's move this up a little bit to our next big feature, which is going to be a huge airport. Let's keep it like that. Let's not click back on track. And, um, yeah, 10 minutes. It's going to take 10 minutes to get there. I guess it's so big and these mountains are so huge that that is quite a ways, isn't it? 15 nautical miles. Okie dokie. Another little bit of sightseeing, and I'll see you for the next section of nar narration. Narration. Nor now I can't narration. <laughs> Holy cow. Right, I'm not gonna lie, this section of this bush trip is kind of boring. So I was enjoying watching traffic crash down below. If you look, go back in the video, if you look at that intersection back there, I don't know if you can see it, because I can't point down, I can't take out the drone. Oh, that intersection right there, that just came into view. If you watch traffic, they all crash into each other. That's what I was doing in there. See, look at, oh, bam, big T-bone. Oh, and he bounced off. Ooh, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> That's what I've been doing during sightseeing, is watching traffic. Oh, when they start to disappear like that, means we got too high. We gotta come back down, then they'll pop. See, they pop back in. That's how I'm judging my altitude, is <laughs> when traffic disappears or not. So there's a reservoir. I'm trying to keep our speed right below red line, and I'm trimming this out, but I'm having a hard time keeping trim steady here at this high rate of speed, but that's okay. I also did the repair and refuel at the last airport. I didn't mention it, I just did it, because that's the only way to refuel your airplane. Um, and it doesn't talk about that anywhere. You just kind of have to know, which is unfortunate. But power of the internet, you can research and stuff like that to learn. Alrighty, we're coming up on the reservoir, which is going to be this big thing right here. And then it goes along, and there's another little one which we're going to look for. And then we have a huge airport that we're not landing at. So that's going to be our, our next two VFR references. That little pond, and then that huge airport which we will skip over because we're not going there. We're going to 056. Okay, continuing with the narration here. Big Pine, a short distance northwest, you'll pass the craggy rise of Crater Mountain as you make your way toward Big Pine proper, a town that still bears the geologic scars of a massive 1872 earthquake. Wow. Oh, yeah, look at this little stuff bumping up here. All right, so we're going to follow the water and the highway at 321, which means we'll be turning. Um, where are we at now? What? No, it says that's a little more. Yeah, a little more west. Yeah, 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 a little more west, which you should be. Yep, and there it is right there. Okay, so we're going to find, follow, follow the creaky rides. That's what this is right here. And then a Mount Crater Mountain, which must be somewhere around here. Either side, I don't know. And then we'll see a town. Only seven knock miles away, so it's right there. And then, let's see. We'll talk about Bishop when we get there. Alrighty, so what's next? Nothing. Just gonna look for this town, which I assume is before that huge airport. So we'll go for a minute here with sightseeing, and then I will resume narration and read the next little section. Here we go.
All right, and just off the nose would be your town of Big Pine proper. I'm watching the viaduct go around it and the main highway go right through it, which reminds me of the research I've done on the Autobahn in Europe, how you have the wide open sections that are famous for being high rates of speed, and then you go into a tiny town. They're not like the interstates in the United States where the interstates go around towns and you just don't ever stop on an interstate. But the Autobahn does stop. That's what the state highway reminds us. U.S. Highway or State Highway? Whatever highway this is, I can't remember. Um, that's what it reminds me of. Wide open for a long time and then you come to a screeching halt in town. Very cool. Alrighty, so let's see here. I think I trimmed a little bit too much. Yeah, we're coming down here. Okie dokie, let's see. Next... Bishop, so this is eight minutes out. Bishop, keep following Highway 395. I knew it was 395, I just can't remember if it's State Highway or U.S. Highway, does it say? Just as root. Okay, let's see where we're at. Bishop, keep following Highway 395, and it'll guide you past the glistening waters of Klondike Lake to the town of Bishop, California, a.k.a. the mule capital of the world. So 324, which means we're going to go even miles still the same direction, I guess. Westerly, like north, north, northwest, yeah, <laughs> on the 16-point compass. I have a 16-point compass story. I'll tell that in a minute. Keep following having the throne and guiding past Klondike Lake to the town of Bishop, California, which I have never been to, but I know of. So we're going to follow that for about eight and a half minutes or so, slightly less because of our speed. Um, so we're looking for another town. I'm looking for any other thing besides another town. Other than eight minutes. Let's start the clock for this one. Um, just because I don't know any other VFR references. Okay, let's pull up the map and see here. Um, so that's where we are now. I would assume the town is by this huge airport. Because Bishop California is no rinky -dink town. So basically we're looking for this airport and then we'll read the next narration and then what? Yeah. Alright, so we'll just look for this airport. Simple, simple. Alrighty, let's not accidentally click on that and screw it up. Alrighty, so let's hop outside. We'll look at the cars. So 16 point compass. So I grew up in a family with like very little support of anything. Like, do your homework, do this, do that. And I remember, now this was before, well, internet existed technically, but not like home internet. This was way before Google, way before AOL, way before the internet as we knew it. And I remember we had a bonus assignment in geography, which I loved. I love geography. I love school anyway. And the assignment was fill in the 16-point compass. And I'm like, okay, there's north, south, east, west, northwest northeast southeast southwest right I'm like that's only eight so i wrote on my paper this is a trick question there's no such thing and they brought it back to school and everybody else had a 16 point compass with you know north northeast northeast east northeast east like that right and then keep going east southeast southeast south southeast and so on i'm like what the heck how did they know this and i would ask the kids how did you know this? Be like, oh, I asked my parents. Or, my parents had this book, and we looked it up together. Or, you know, we did this or we did that. Because you can Google it. And I was so disheartened. So I went to my parents. I'm like, hey, guys, what's a 16-point compass? And they're like, I don't know. It's your homework. You figure it out. I said, but all the other kids, their parents told them. And they're like, their parents helped them too much. You know, this is way before. This is Gen X stuff. This is way before helicopter parenting. You know, that whole, like, cliche goofy stuff it was just like no their parents helped them too much blah 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 and i was like no it's about working together and that's when i realized i was what seventh grade so seven plus five is 12 so 12 years old um that my parents just didn't care and it took me that long to realize it and then it went on through college like when i got to college like why are you going to college it's too much work just shovel driveways for a living, drive a truck, blah, blah, blah. Which you do need college for any of that stuff now. But um, back then, you back then you could get a career and be a CEO with all a college degree. But So it's different. Those of you who are younger, those of you who are older know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so that's just how it was. And like, 
they're like, I'm like, I'm going to do this in college. I need to practice piano, blah, blah, blah. They're like, why? You're just wasting your time. Little did they know, with my college degree, in the late 90s, I was making $65 an hour teaching piano lessons, which in the late 90s was huge money. But then it burnt out. But that's another story for another time. So there's my 16-point compass story. Actually, there's a part B to that. The part B is, because of that, I've always been very, because of that one incident, I've always been very careful about making sure I'm there for my kids and support my kids and help my kids, but not helicopter my kids. I have a lot of helicoptering parents, friends, because of our generation, but, um, well, there's a huge airport, by the way. But um, I make sure not to helicopter, but I make sure there to help them. So one of the first things I did when my kid was like in kindergarten, is I'm like, here is a 16 point compass. It'd be fun to know. And so for his art project in kindergarten, he wrote a 16 point compass with him and me and he wrote, thank you for teaching this to me, Dad. And that was his first art project in school. So that's kind of a cool story, right? I think. Even if you don't like kids, <laughs> maybe it's a cool story. I don't know. But that is my story. So let's see here. Back on task. There's the huge airport. So let's pull up our map so we know where we are. We're right here. Now we're going to leave the water, looks like. And just head down the valley to our next airport. As a point of reference, because we're going to what? 056. Alright, I'm having a really hard time keeping this thing level. Even though it's trimmed out, it just doesn't want to stay. Jeez, please, what's going on with this thing? So now we just have to go down this valley and look for an airport. We really don't have any other references other than a valley right here. That's what I'm using anyway. However, we do have a heading. So, back to this. It said go for 8 minutes. Almost there already. I guess that'd be pretty close. Where we'll we set that once we go past this town where we set this. Then, once we get to this town, we're going to go to Chaufant. Is it Chaufant? Or Chaufant? Chaufant Valley. As it passes through Bishop, Highway 395 splits off towards the west, but you'll keep, want, keep your heading. 354, very important. There's 340 right now, 350 right now. You want to keep your heading and pick up U.S. Route 6. So I guess there's another road down there, which I can't see right now. My airplane's bounced around too much. Outside the city limits, Route 6 will briefly bend east, only then should we turn north again, aiming you to the town of Chanfant at the foot of the White Mountain Wilderness Area. So we do have a road, Route 6. We're going to follow Route 6 at 354 degrees for 6 minutes and 37 seconds. And I still have to turn my tool tips on just to see what these two things do. Because I don't want to touch them, but we need to know. But that's probably parking brake. I don't know what that is. Fuel, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Alrighty, so here we go. There's the airport. There is the town. It's a pretty good sized town, right? Well, Bishop, California. Like I said, there's no slouch of a town. Alrighty, so let's see here. Route something, rather. Goes to the west right there. Route 6 goes this way, and then east, and then north. So we're going to follow this road to our next airport, which will be the White Mountain Wilderness area, and that's where we'll pick up this right here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Something crazy is happening here. What is going on? Dude, seriously, what is going on? Alrighty, so let's see. Um, 637, so let's reset that. And go for six and a half minutes or so following 354 and why is my airplane doing crazy what is going on dude is this like scary weather or something i don't know about what the heck so anyway we're going to follow this road right there for about six minutes or so and then we'll meet up again and read our next bit of narration
So when I hit reset on the timer, it reset it, but it didn't restart it. So the only thing we have to look for here is the road, which is right here. That's easy to see. That's a really easy road to find right here. And then that little airport. So we need to get a little closer to the road so we don't miss the little airport. Um, we're not landing at the airport, but we don't want to miss it either. So we got to be careful here. Um, but I assume it's going to be tiny, you know, based on the icon for it. it probably isn't going to be paved. So we got to be really careful. I just going to have to jump ahead to the next reference. Um, because how long did it say? Six and a half minutes. Yeah, it's been about that. So should be pretty soon, right? There's something about a town that splits off. Yeah, blah, blah. The town of Chafon at the base of the White Mountain Wilderness area. Um, but I don't see an airport. So either it's here and the airport is missing <laughs> like the other one was, which doesn't matter in this case because we'll land there, or it's up here a little bit farther. So let's just move ahead with our narration here. Um, Falls Creek Ranch Lake. Past Chalfon, tracks of farmland await, along with an isolated oblong body of water to the east. So that's seven and a half minutes out. So this will be a good thing to find. So we'll keep the timer off. It's, uh, it's a little bit west in the compass. What are we at right now? What are we looking at? 354, exactly. Holy guacamole. All right, so let's pull up the VFR map. Be careful not to hit back on track. And let's just jump ahead here. Um, what? Okay, what? Wait a second. What? Hang on, hang on, hang on. It said, okay, so that's 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 nautical, so that's 20 nautical miles. Past Chalfon tracks of farmland await, along with an isolated oblong body of water to the east. Well, here's, no, that can't be. Because where are we headed to? We're headed to 056. Yeah, see, we, nope. It can't be that because we're headed to that airport here. So, east is to the right. Where's this oblong body of water? I mean, yeah, I guess. That's isolated. Um, but that's not that long. We're going to 056, right? Yeah. So... Something funky's going on here. Um, I don't even see that. But we're going the right heading on the compass, so we're just gonna keep following this road, I guess. What else is it telling us? And then later, yeah, carry on up the road as the hills, rolling hills rise to the west. That's gonna be here, maybe. And the town of Penta comes into view. You'll know you arrived when you reach the main crossroad and see the town scattered collection of trees miss the desert. Okay, so we're looking for trees in the town, which is probably here. And then Madame Airstrip. Outside of Benton, Route 6 bends northeast, pointing you directly toward the desert peak of Mount Montgomery and the borderline between California and Nevada. Once you've crossed over, look for the remains of an old ranch on the west side of the road. Locals call the dirt runway beside a Madame Airport and is next your next stop. So the west side, okay, so here's the road and there's the ranch. Hopefully this exists because there are no other points of reference here. Oh, if that isn't there like the previous one, we're in big trouble or two ago. Okay, well, we kind of lost it here because I never, here it is. There we go. Okay, we can just reset our timer now. So that's going to be this 80, right? That's the 80. I don't see this tiny bit of water here, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're passing 80, so now we can... So what would that have been? Um, that's the white paint planes. Okay, right? Yep, so now we can reset the timer, start it, so seven and a half minutes or so. Um, seven minutes, three seconds. We will 
find something else. An oblong body of water to the east. And then we'll be there. Heading towards there. Okay, so seven and a half minutes. Then we'll see what's up. East is to the right, though. Is it this stuff? That doesn't make sense because that's our destination. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let's just go for a couple minutes and look ahead again. Oh, I just realized you can minimize these when you're done with them. And then you keep track of where you are. Check that out. You gotta click on them twice, though. Um, so where are we here? Bishop, California, we did that one. Shroudfall Valley. So we're actually headed here, right? This is what we're doing right now. 335, which we're doing about seven and a half minutes oh my my child is mad i hope i can finish this lake before i'm needed oh boy anyway so this works pretty well okay so seven and a half minutes and then um we're looking for an isolated oblong body of water to the east which i still don't understand but we're only about halfway there it's very nice to know i can minimize those because i have a hard time keeping track of myself Alrighty, cool one more little bit of a sightseeing and then we should be here and ready for the next step Given our speed and the fact we have to make a turn on the right, because that would be 013, I would say we're pretty good here. So let's see next. Benton, carry up on the road as long as the rolling hills rise to the west, and you know the town of Benton comes into view ahead. You'll know you're there because of the crossroads and see the town scattered collection of trees and miss the desert. Now, is that this area? I mean, there's some pretty big crossroads there. Let me reset this. There's a whole bunch of crossroads, see? And I don't really see any trees. And we're way ahead of schedule in terms of our time. But that turns to 013 right there. Yeah, see, there's the trees. There's the scattered trees. There's the crossroads. So we're way ahead. We are hauling is what that means. Because it's only been what? What's it been? Seven minutes, and we've done two sections in seven minutes? Now it says, I think this is set, the time is set for 90 knots, but this is kilometers per hour. So on the bottom of your screen, 90 knots equals what kilometers per hour class? You tell me, I don't know. So I assume we're going a little faster than 90 knots, but not a whole lot faster, right? Alrighty, here we go. Let's reset that, and we're going to head towards 013 so we don't crash. Oh, we're almost there. Outside of Benton, Route 6 bends to the northeast, which is right here, bending to the northeast. Uh, pointing you directly toward the desert peak of Mount Montgomery. Which should be pretty easy to see here on the corner, I would think. Maybe. We'll find out in a minute. And the borderline between California and Nevada. Or is it Nevada? I think it's Nevada. Nevada. I know we say Nevada here, but I think it's Nevada. Once you've crossed over, look for the remains of Old Ranch. An old ranch on the west side of the road, which is right here. Locals call the dirt runway beside at Madame Airport. So here it says four and a half minutes. Uh, we'll see. We will see if we're really that close or not. And because we're going so dang fast, we're going to say we're just going to start looking here in a minute. Um, it's the next stop, and you're on the tour. Next stop. Okay. So, okay. Let's hide that. I don't think the map's really going to do us any good right now. We did pass that. We're turning here now. There is a town there. And 056 is right there. So it's before 
this long skinny water thing. So we're going to look for the long skinny water thing. That's where we're going, right? 056, 056. Or no, that's Oscar 56. I bet that's Oscar 56 because zero would have a line. Oscar 56. Yeah, we're just going to look for that long body of water thing and stop before it. Ooh, I almost clicked back on track to close the window. That would be bad. Okie dokie, so here we go. We're just going to follow this road very, very carefully. And, um, what's our timer? Only a minute, okay. Very, very careful. Oh boy, we're doing this weird thing again. I wonder if it's supposed to be simulating, like, gusts coming up or something. We're going to follow this road very, very carefully and look for... Yeah, see, there's the... There's the water already. So this must be it right here. Another dark brown spot. So I'm guessing there's not going to be a runaway again like last time or two times ago. So fortunately for us, the hand-built things and the activities and POIs and everything in the simulator stick out like a sore thumb. However, we have to hope there's a runway there. I think there might be one this time, actually. There might be. And there's that peak they're talking about. Which is what again? Um, Mount Montgomery. The borderline between Nevada, Nevada, and California. Alright, there's the cars. Let's come on down. We are at 7,000 feet, but we don't know airport elevation. Has to be, I don't know, 5,000, maybe 5,500. I'm guessing we'll see. We might actually have a runway. No, I don't think so. Alrighty, we've been doing well not bouncing. We've been doing well landing on the main gear and not on the tail wheel. <laughs> But our landings have been pretty rough. And um, let's see if we can be a little less rough. We don't need much stopping distance. But that's why I'm landing so rough, is I want to plant it and stop, which we don't need to really do. Um, but we'll see here. I mean, I assume this is where we land, because there's that water up there, and it's brown. It's a different color. Right, let's slow this thing down. Holy cow. Slow it down. Slow it down. And um, you ready for flaps? And soften the blow of touchdown. We have plenty of space. Plenty of space. First set of flaps. Second set of flaps. There we go. Okay, keep an eye on that speed. Don't drop low 80 yet. Don't drop low 80 yet. We have plenty of room. I don't need to land on a dime. I'm hoping, though, some of the Alaskan bush trip legs that they're planning for the next update. I hope those are really scary and dangerous. Like where you literally have like 300 feet to land on or something like that. Like when they land on sandbars in real life on really windy days and they don't need any runway space. It's so cool. Alright, here we go. Let's at least get to the airport. Pitch down for speed. Throttles to soften that descent a little bit. And not quite so slow yet. Tail dragger, so no flare. You just gotta coast down softly. So here we go. Let's get to stall. Okay, soften that descent. Soften that descent. Soften it. Nah, it's gonna be rough again. Oh well. Oof. Ooh. But we did not land on the tail wheel. See, we're coming down now. See, no tail wheel. That's good. Let's um. Let's stop here. And we'll do repair and refuel for the next leg. And I didn't get to in time. Okay, never mind. It congratulated us. We did it. Good. All right, next. Um, we're done for today. Done for this video. Let's go back to the menu. And that was leg. Those are legs two or three and four. And then the rest of them are pretty short, I think. Yeah, 10, 16, six minutes. Oh, there's a 46 minute in there. So yeah, we'll be doing a whole bunch of these per video coming up. I think what I might start doing is having quite longer videos, like at least an hour, and get as many legs as we can, maybe. Um, we'll see. We'll see how I feel when I edit these up. So that was legs three and four. We'll start with leg five next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment so we can play the YouTube algorithm game, and I'll see you for legs six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve next time.